All right, each bay out here tells a story and so far today our story is that winter won't give up and Lake Superior is extremely cold and unforgiving and that the wind forecasters are a little bit off from time to time. It was supposed to be pretty, pretty calm, but uh, we have sizable chop, but luckily we have our 219 Lund here that uh, got us out here safely. Some ice on the windshield, ice on the trolling motor. It's, it's cold, it's, it's, it's late April, and this is just the winter that won't end. I mean, there's driving up, you know, this morning, there, there were skidoo tracks in the ditch, right? Like people are still literally driving snowmobiles around in late April. That's how cold it's been and how cold it is right now. I'd, I'd say my feet were the coldest part on me right now, but uh, I can't feel my feet anymore. So we're going to go with the hands. The hands are the coldest right now. And uh, I think I see a snow squall in the distance, so <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> uh, but the plan for today is to jig up some, some lake trout out here on Lake Superior. It's our first open water trip of the year. And it's always fun to, fun to get out here. As you can imagine, you know, water temps are 34 to 36 degrees, extremely cold. Um, you know, there's going to be no fish in shallow when it's like that. So we're going to focus on a little bit deeper fish, 100 to 150 feet. And we're going to, we're going to go vertical on them with jigs and tubes and yeah, just see how the, how the day plays out. But really cold temps like this congregate fish. So we really have to utilize our existing knowledge and our, our, you know, our sonar and find where these fish are because they're, they're grouped up, they're congregated. So let's idle up here, get that ball mount down, find some fish and uh, get some hook sets in. We need to warm up. We need a couple fish to warm us up here. So hopefully it won't be too long. All right, let's get this ball mount down. Break all that ice off it. Let us get a GPS fix here. Woohoo! Come on, no GPS fix, come on. All right, spot locked. We got a fish on bottom, that's a good sign. Oh man, I gotta warm up. Let's get some baits out. Kind of have a variety of tubes that we're gonna be using here today. Um, you know, we have the, the Northland level head predator tubes. We have some, you know, other baits that are dressed up a little bit. Got some marabou feathers on there. You know, all good baits. You know, these trout usually aren't, aren't too picky, but you know, that's the type of stuff that we're gonna be, be using out here today. Trout candy, trout candy. So yeah, we're just, you know, we got here, we're graft a couple fish and that kind of gives us the confidence that there's some fish around here. So get some baits in the water, rig up these St. Croix Legend Tournament, you know, inshore saltwater rods. They make a great jigging rod spooled up with a, you know, a pissy fun Carbon X size 4,000 20 pound braid. You know, you're, you're ready for battle with, uh, with this setup here. So a seven foot 11 medium heavy power rod. So yeah, let's get a bait down and hopefully uh, it'll be too long before we, before we see one. Seagull knows what's up. It's like, come on guys. Right. Cool. That dropped pretty fast actually. Make it down. Yeah. We fishing, buddy. Cast her out there. It's cold. Yeah. It's cold. It's wavy. It's cloudy. It's everything. Ought to be snowy. Need some fish to warm us up. Fish on. Fish on. Hey, that's a bend in the rod in the first fish of the morning. Get the gloves off here. Feels like not a bad one either. Oof, yeah, that's a good fish. That's a good fish, man. He's going down. That's a good fish. That pissy fun is singing. Yes. That'll warm you right up. That'll warm you right up. I can't really stop this guy. 
Cool, this is fun. Lighter weight spinning gear, and it's not even that lightweight, but you know, just downsizing. But it's nice to have a, you know, Legend Tournament Saltwater St. Croix with that longer butt here, so you can hold that under your, under your arm and get leverage on these fish. I can't really make any ground on this thing. Definitely gonna be a better fish. This is just crazy conditions out here, man. You'd swear it was like January. Like there's still snow on the shore. I mean, it's literally snowflakes coming down. It's bitterly cold. And we're out here in the boat, hooked up to, this is gonna be, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. This is a big fish, I think. It's heavy. It's heavy. Yeah, it's not a bad fish. That's a cool one there, man. You can uh, dip into the one net here. There we go. Look at that. That's a heavy fish. Solid. That's neat. That is neat. That is a fatty there, I'll tell you. There's that. There's that. And look at that. That is a fat Cisco at Lake Trout, baby. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Big peck fins, big belly on her. That fish is ice cold. Its fins might actually freeze. It's weird saying that in the boat. That's the way to start the morning. That is a great, great Lake Superior Lake Trout. Let's get her back and catch another one. All right, big girl. Down you go. She don't need much convincing. My hands are numb. That's cool. That's uh. That gives you confidence that there's some there's some hungry fish in the area and that's you know really no surprise that it only took a couple minutes to get bit you know usually if you you know go through the work of you know finding some high percentage areas and you graft those fish like trout, trout are a pretty uh you know merciful species where they're they usually don't take a whole lot of convincing out here so great start to the morning let's catch another one Missed him two times and he came back. Grant cut his just a little while ago. Here we go. Boat flipper. But it's still a lake trout, what we're after. Yeah, right in the top of the nose there too. Send this one back. I couldn't even make it back to bottom. Feels like another decent fish. That's a great problem to have when your jig can't even make it to bottom. <laughs> She's a little nautical out here. <laughs> Gotta spread the legs and get your balance down. This is wild, the snow squalls. I can't say I've ever been out here in the springtime when it's snowing before. Madness, absolute madness. Not a bad one. And kind of where we spot locked here, like we only graph one fish on bottom, but that one fish kind of gets the rest of them in trouble, right? Like out here on Lake Superior, your structure's so big and the rocks down there are so big, like fish can hide, right? But if there's one fish up above all that and you graph that fish, he's kind of, you know, bust his cover for all his buddies that are down lower. So if you graph one, you know, spot lock on it and fish it because I guarantee you there's more with them. Like these trout out here are never, are never alone on a piece of structure. Look at that. Wow. That's amazing. So amazing. Really cool. Like this, this fish has a really big head on it and a really small body. You know, it's got those characteristics of a, of a cisco at or even a, you know, a, a humper. Let's take a look. Look at how skinny its tail is, hey, and how big its pecs are. Like, that's massive. Such a cool fish, full of character. Mm -hmm. 
butt scratch a good one. <laughs> we just made that little move. We just made a little move. I did one jig and bam. That's a heavy one. Yeah, I took 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 some line there. So fun doing this with spinning gear. <laughs> right? I like being underpowered, man. I think it's better for, for the fish overall. Uh, but, you know, allows them to burp and be able to release better. And it's more fun of a fight. Oh, yeah. Feels decent. Took a really big run there, too. Yeah, he, he didn't want to come up. Nice to go to move just a little bit and hook up right away. Well, that's the thing. If your spot runs dry, you know, move. 100 feet and getting some new water. There it is. Some color. Oh, yeah. Not a bad fish, buddy. Not bad at all. Look at the belly. Look at the patterns on the belly. That's there. a cool fish. Wow. That's a big fish. <laughs> That's a really big fish. Nice, Sweet. buddy. That's awesome. That's a great fish. Awesome. How cool is that, Dave? Yeah, that's really cool. Beauty. Let's get her in. That's gorgeous designs. Let's take a look at her. Yeah, wow. Hold her up, that's a beautiful fish, buddy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and look at what uh, what she puked up. That there's a big, big herring. Isn't that awesome? That's look at sweet. that. Sorry to take your lunch, girl, but <laughs> isn't that unreal? Look at the patterns on the belly there. That's that is cool. such a cool looking fish, buddy. That's oh. a gorgeous, gorgeous lake trout. That's yeah. why they get big out here. They eat big herring like this. That's why we see seagulls flying around us right now. Like the Boy. seagulls know, man. They know where there's bait. That's awesome. Gorgeous fish busker. Nice work, huh? Yeah. Let's yeah. get her back. There we go. There she goes. that spot was was pretty good to us um, that was kind of more of an isolated piece of structure surrounded by some deep water and again you can never go go wrong in, in that type of scenario and again like the smaller the more isolated the the better um, but now we're going to kind of transition and go fish some underwater points that are coming off of coming off of mainland um, you know they definitely hold fish you might not hold like sheer numbers like like this did but uh you know they definitely hold fish so we're gonna buzz buzz up the shoreline here and you know number one graph them number two you know try to locate where those fish are you know kind of that spot on the spot um you know all your structure out here is big your underwater points it's all big big structure and it takes kind of a long time to fish so using our electronics will be able to eliminate quite a bit of water um but we're gonna get on plane here and uh fish some fish some new stuff and see what happens All right, we graphed a couple fish there, so we dropped the waypoint. We're gonna turn the boat and uh, get right over them. And again, when we say spot lock, it's just using our Minn Kota trolling mortar to essentially anchor us over those fish. Um, it's nice. It's uh, definitely a, a cheat code to, to doing this, is to be able to hover right over those fish. You know, here on Lake Superior, there's always tons of current and wind. You know, if you just kill your motor and drift, like you'd be off those fish in no time. So. Using our, our Minn Kota bow mount trolling motor, we can essentially just hover right over those fish and drop our baits vertically down on them. So 
again but we drove you know this this underwater point here is maybe 200 yards long you know we drove over it and there was only one group of fish on it so you know if you were just to come here and blindly fish this underwater point you know you definitely have limited success um, just by driving over it you can eliminate a lot of that water and find where exactly where those fish are and just be more efficient and, and fish more areas throughout throughout the day and uh you know i think it just helps you put more fish in the boat so we're going to uh wait till we graph these fish one more time and hit spot lock and drop a bait down and hopefully we're going to uh to see one here all right we drop them we are a dropping again i like to just kind of watch my line as it goes down because when you see it stop you're either on bottom or your bait is in a fish's mouth and you hope it's the latter. It's a race to the bottom, Busky. Yep. <laughs> Who's gonna get there first? Probably getting close. There's bottom. Come on, baby, give it to us. Nothing. Oh, I just got whacked. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Feeling anything? Oh, not yet. I hit him on the way up. There he is. It's double up. <laughs> Feels like a heavy one. There we go. And that's what driving around until you grab a fish does. It, you know, it, it definitely pays off. It definitely pays off. <laughs> good. They're all good fish, man. They're all fun. You never know what the next one's going to look oh, like. Right. They put up such a fun fight on these rods. The seven foot eleven, like you got your work cut out for you a little bit, but I like that. It's fun. That's a cool looking one. Very cool looking fish, man. Give me a tail, big head, eh? Huge head and very skinny tail. Wow, man, that looks like a prehistoric fish. That is an absolutely wild fish. That's a prehistoric, like, Lake Superior trout. Look how skinny its tail is. Wow, that is a wild fish. But these are those subspecies of lake trout that just live on, you know, just, just structure that doesn't have a lot of food. You know, there's so much area out here that's just desert. And it truly pro portrays that, just the characteristics of this fish. Look how skinny it is in the tail. Look how big its head is. Really big head on that Huge guy. head, man. What a cool fish. And that's what we talk about, how every fish out here is special. Everyone's different. Every fish tells its own story. That is so cool. Let's get this fish back. Gosh, that's a big fish. Oh, oh. Just popped off too, dude. Oh. Oh. Dang. I knew it was big, but I didn't think, didn't think it was that big. That's a nice fish. Oh my gosh. Oh, this one might be hard to lift from there. Oh, look at that lake trout. Man, is that awesome. What a thick fish. It's crazy how much power these things have too. It's just a fight all the way up to the boat. So fun. Huge, thick back. What a cool fish. aggression of these lake trout. These fish live in such isolated areas. When they see a bait in front of them, they attack it. And it's kind of nice. Sometimes you'll lose a fish once or twice and 
they'll give you a third chance. But in this situation, you know, vertical jigging like this, you have to use a braid of line. I mean, sure, you can maybe catch a few fish with mono, but just that no stretch of, of the braid really enables you to, to set the hook and, you know, get these fish, get these fish up. So braided line with a, uh, with a fluorocarbon leader, you know, you can't go wrong with, with that setup. It fishes very, very well. And we're just trying to stay as, as vertical as possible, you know. Sure, we're kind of casting out and working these baits back towards the boat, but, you know, aside from that, just kind of vertically jigging. And to feel these trout hit these baits is so much fun. Look at the dots on the belly on that one. Is that really pretty on it? No, that's cool. This one has a big eel pout in its throat. Oh, wow. If you guys can, you guys can see that, that's the a, that's a tail of an eel pout. Isn't that wild? Burbot way out here, yeah, that's cool. Look at that. So that, you know, a mere five pound fish has a two pound eel pout in its throat and it went after my big tube. <laughs> Pretty crazy, huh? Pretty cool. Fish with uh, such aggression. And as deep as lake trout live, eel pout are right there with them. You know, eel pout are a primary forage base of of lake trout and uh yeah i mean that's lake trout candy a big old eel pout <laughs> isn't that cool it's not that big of a fish and he's got a huge eel pout sticking out of his throat and he went after my ounce and a half tube pretty cool This is a big fish. Oh my gosh, I can see him already. Tons of air bubbles oh coming yeah, up. Look burp. at that. <laughs> that is so cool. That's so cool down there. Dang. He won't let me go any higher than this. He's just chilling right there at about, what, I don't know, 20 feet? 20 feet, yeah. Oh, here he comes. Nice fish, buddy. Oh. Gosh, does that look cool. Here it comes. Oh yeah, that's a stud. Wow. Yep, that's what a big a one, buddy. Cool good fish. job. Man, is there some good fish out here today, huh? Yeah, that's been a blast. Great caliber. So fish. many fish. Look at that one. That's a, that's gotta be the biggest one of the day so far. That might be. Buddy, what a fish. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. You you had the hot stick at the end there with a couple big ones. Like that's a significant, significant lake trout. Yeah. What a day we've had out here from snow and wind and just numbing cold this morning to you know those winds totally laid down and it is beautiful out here. The sun is shining and big lake trout are uh, hitting the deck. What a day it's been. It's been magic. That's a great way to cap it off. I'm excited for you. That's a great, great fish. So we are going to uh, get that one released, get this boat on plane and get back home before it gets too late. But uh, what an incredible day and what a way to kickstart our 2023 open water season. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.